Hi, I'm Steve Mann and this is Paper Classroom. Welcome to another Water and Chemical Additives tutorial. In this particular tutorial, we want to be talking about hard water. So what is hard water? How is it formed? And how do we get rid of it? So I think it's first worth just reviewing the different types of water that we can have. There's soft water. So this is the really good quality water. No calcium or magnesium ions in it. Uh, with soap, it gives a nice form, a nice lather. And then you've got hard water. But there are two types of hard water. You've got water that's got a temporary hardness. And if you boil it, then the hardness will disappear. You actually get a deposit of chalk formed, calcium carbonate formed. And once the material is out of solution, when it's now insoluble, then it isn't in solution to cause you the problems that hardness causes you. And then there's water that we say is permanently hard. So no matter how long you boil this for, you will not get rid of the hardness. You've either got to resort to ion exchange methods or chemical precipitation methods. So the causes of hardness, as I mentioned a moment ago, it's caused by the presence of calcium or magnesium ions. So calcium and magnesium are in group two of the periodic table, if you remember. So Ca2 plus ions and Mg2 plus ions, they're the things that interact with soap and cause a scum rather than a lather. Uh, they're things that will form deposits. Temporary hardness is caused by the bicarbonate ion. So this is the HCO3. So magnesium bicarbonate or calcium bicarbonate, you can destroy those molecules in, in a way um, so that you get rid of the hardness. So just to show you where hard water comes from, here's a nice sort of simple equation. And what this equation says is that chalk, calcium carbonate, plus water, plus carbon dioxide, becomes calcium hydrogen carbonate or calcium bicarbonate. Now you may wonder, you know, why am I telling you that? Well, what's the relevance? Well, the relevance is how this is formed. This carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide in the air. This water is actually rain. So, as rain falls through the air, it picks up carbon dioxide gas. The carbon dioxide gas dissolves in the water to form carbonic acid. Then, when it lands on the ground, if the ground happens to be full of chalk, full of calcium carbonate, then this carbonic acid will dissolve, it'll react with the calcium carbonate, it'll turn it into soluble calcium bicarbonate. And it's this that gives you the hard water. Interestingly, this is that material that's causing you the hard water, calcium bicarbonate. If you boil it, Putting that heat in causes the reaction to reverse. Calcium carbonate is formed. And normally when you see things like a, a pan or a kettle that's boiled a lot of hard water, what will happen over a period of time, you will get deposits on the inside of that vessel that everyone causes, calls scale. Now that scale is actually calcium carbonate. Now, because it's come out of solution as a solid, that calcium is no longer in solution. Therefore, you no longer have hardness. So boiling this solution of calcium hydrogen carbonate causes the formation of calcium carbonate, which is scale, plus water and CO2 
is released into the atmosphere. So we could look at those two equations together. Here is calcium carbonate combining with water and carbon dioxide, carbonic acid, to produce calcium bicarbonate. And here is the calcium bicarbonate. You need to put energy in to make it boil. And that will then reverse to calcium carbonate and water and carbon dioxide. So that's how you get rid of temporary hardness, boil it. You've then got to deal with the scale, of course. Now, permanent hardness is where you have sulfate ions there rather than the bicarbonate ions. So these sulfate ions linked to the calcium, it's the calcium again that causes the hardness. Also, you could have uh, magnesium ions, you could have magnesium sulfate. One of the things you can do is to add an excess of sodium carbonate solution and this is called a water softener. So sodium carbonate, also known as washing soda, what happens there is if you have a, a large number of carbonate ions, they will displace the sulfate and they will form calcium carbonate, which of course is a soluble. So, uh, which of course is soluble, insoluble. So what you've done is you've taken those calcium ions out of solution again. With temporary hardness, you took it out of solution by boiling it. With permanent hardness, you've added <clears throat> extra carbonate ions. The carbonate will then replace the sulfate and you get calcium carbonate as a solid. Once it's a solid, it's no longer in solution and therefore it cannot cause hardness. The other way of water softening is to actually remove the calcium ions. And we do that with ion exchange resins. Ion exchange resins are high surface area material. They may well be beads. And as your solution containing calcium ions runs over the surface of these beads, these beads have hydrogen ions attached to them. Part of their chemical makeup is they're bristling with hydrogen ions on the top of the, on the, of the beads. The calcium ions will go onto the bead. They will displace the hydrogen ions and therefore you've removed calcium from the system. Once these beads are completely full of calcium ions, when they've released all the hydrogen ions and absorbed as much calcium as you can do, very often you can rejuvenate these. You actually pass salt through sodium chloride. So rather than having uh, hydrogen ions there, it will release sodium ions. So depending on the type of um, ion exchange resin that you use, you'll either release hydrogen ions or you'll release sodium ions. So that's all I really want to say about hard and soft water. I hope you found it interesting and uh, useful. Thank you for watching our videos. Please feel free to leave any comments and I look forward to seeing you again shortly in another one of our videos.